often we read over the word, but we don't chew it. We don't digest it. So we read it. We quote it. Oh, God, Psalm 19, 13. Read it. Presumption is transgression. And that takes us all, of, all the way back to Adam and Eve. Adam transgressed. Eve was deceived. So when we transgress, we're bringing our person back to that endemic man. We're bringing ourselves back to the garden, back to Adam, back to the first sin that caused us to be a deprived people. Presumption is sin. If you say God don't need you, we are transgressing. Keep back your servant from presumptuous sin. Let it not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and innocent from great transgression. God help us. God help us. God help us. Another issue that keeps many of God's people from sharing the gospel it's language barriers, language barriers. I tell you, I am so blessed to be in this congregation and to see the beauty of the Indonesian people. You all have different shades of, Indon of, of, of being Indonesian, just like black folk. <laughs> you, got the, you got the dark black folk, the middle, middle, of the, middle of the way black folks, and you got the light black folk. You're Indonesian, you have beautiful shades. When I came in this place, I said, boy, there's some beautiful people. Beautiful people. Your kids are adorable. But one of the things, even with that beauty, it could be a stumbling. Because many times you find America being a nation with so many nationalities, so many languages, so many ethnicities, it's intimidating. How often, and I know it's only one person in here, right? One person in here. How often you think to want to say something to someone and automatically between your flesh and the devil, you say, I don't, I, I, don't, don't say nothing. Your English is not too good. Shh, shh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. You're going to botch it up. You, 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 you're going to make a fool of yourself. Hush. Shh. Don't say nothing. Shh. Shh. My brethren, do we not know that we don't have to speak with eloquence to win the laws. We got to speak the name that is above every other name. The scripture says, if he be lifted up, speaking of Jesus Christ, if he be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. Do you realize that that's an excuse if you say you're not eloquent in speech because all you need is Jesus Christ? Can't we all say that? You see, if we would just sit with ourselves and be honest with ourselves, don't you realize we all have a lot of lame excuses? I want to tell you, my brothers, you are beautiful because Christ dwells in you, and we all, all of us have to rise up from allowing language to be a barrier. We know in the word of God that there are great men and women of God who allow themselves by what they felt they could do to hinder them from being obedient. But I just want us to know there are people in the Bible who at the beginning felt they could not do what God told them to do because of their speech. Because of their speech. Is anyone familiar with Moses? Oh, Moses, great man of God. Oh, Moses. Let us turn to Exodus chapter 3. Verse 
verse 10. The, the Lord says to Moses, come now. I want to send you unto Pharaoh because I want you to speak to him um, to deliver my people, the children of Israel. I want you to deliver them from the land of Egypt. And let's take a peek at what Moses says to God Almighty. Do you believe the gore of Moses? My goodness. Look at what Moses said to God. Moses said unto the Lord, Oh, Lord, I am not eloquent. Oh, my goodness. I am not eloquent, neither henceforth nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Does that sound like any one of us? Do we ever feel like that? Do we ever feel that like we don't have the right words to say? We don't have the proper grammar. We don't have the right dialect. We don't have the right speech. Do we ever feel like Moses? But today, my brothers and sisters, I just want you to know that the anointing of the Spirit of Almighty God is able to break that bondage, break that yoke, and set us free. For whom the Son set free is truly free indeed. Now, when Moses says this to God, <laughs> let's look at what the Lord says to Moses. And the Lord, <laughs> the Lord says to Moses, who made your mouth? Who made man's mouth? He also goes on and says, who made the deaf? Who made the dumb? Who made the sin? Who made the blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Oh, glory to God. I think at this point, Moses was starting to get the lesson. Because when God says this last line, last line, he says, now, therefore, go. Go. That's the key word. Now, therefore, go. And I will be with thy mouth, and I will teach thee what thou shalt say. Do we believe that? Do we believe that sharing the gospel, evangelism, is all about what we have to say? If we really believe it's what God has to say, we will open our mouth. Because we know the words we speak are not our own. See, if we could take, if we could but for a moment take the focus off the me, off the self, off the, ooh, I can do it, and put it on, he can do it. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If we will believe half the scriptures we read, we will be doing more for the kingdom of God. I'll say it again. If we will believe half the scriptures we read, we will be doing more for the kingdom of God. My dear saints, my dear brothers and sisters, it's time for us to get honest with ourselves. We don't want to be church folk, at least I don't. I want to be powered, filled, anointed, touched, used of God in this dark and sick world. That's what I want. All that other stuff is icing on the cake. Because I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, one day, one, one day we're going to stand before a holy God. And it may very well be... What have you done with the Christ? What have you done with the nail-scarred hands? What have you done with those drops of blood that flew from the Savior's veins? Are we ready to answer the question? Has Hearing the gospel become a good movie to us where we come to church, watch the pastor, hear the pastor, go home and do nothing. This is not to condemn anyone, but it's to provoke us. Do something with the blood of Jesus. Do something with those nail-scarred hands. Do something with the, with the death. The crucifixion, do something with the cross. Do something with the cross. Many have made the cross a piece of jewelry. Some have made the name Jesus a bracelet. Some have even gone so far 
and make it a tattoo. But my brethren, we call to make it a way of life. 